I simply can't believe I'm still talking about this. It has a spotty and unproven history that's nearly a half century old. But somehow, despite this poor track record, vitamin D somehow makes its way into the conversations about how to control our multiple sclerosis. More research is needed, they always say. What would it take to convince them? What would it take to finally conclude that vitamin D isn't effective at all? What if vitamin D is one of those tiny small band-aids you stick on your pinky and you have a cut, but you're trying to use that small band-aid to stop the bleeding from a gunshot wound? <laughs> hey, it's Steve. Throughout MS history, many have noticed that MS patients have low vitamin D. They ask, does low vitamin D cause MS? But I think people are starting to wake up that even though there's an association between low vitamin D and MS, association does not, ca does not mean causation. There has been many different ways people have tried to ignore this and tackle the inconsistency. When it's called the Coimbra Protocol, it was developed by a neurologist, Dr. Cicero Coimbra in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So simplified, it's a protocol that is basically a high dose vitamin D regimen. But saying it's high dose is an understatement. It's so high that, in fact, it can only be done under the supervision of a qualified physician. So let's let's get to the the numbers. What does what does that high dose mean? Well, the FDA recommends an individual consume 400 to 800 international units per day. But the Coimbra protocol recommends anywhere from 40,000 to 200,000 international units per day. To say that's noticeable and that's big is an understatement. <laughs> Do you see what I see? Something just doesn't add up. Without artificial supplementation, then those numbers are just simply unobtainable. Do you think that's what nature is calling us to do? I don't think so, but apparently I'm missing something. This is why I still am talking about D3. Infinita Music left me a comment. Dude, you are so wrong. Don't dismiss the Coimbra protocol without due diligence. 80% of patients are in total remission, disease stopped for years. Oh boy, you state 80% like that's a number to be proud of. That means one in five people are still relapsing. But regardless, I'm not, I'm not focused on relapsing. I mean, nowadays there are drugs out that if you get on them, they're, you're, you're pretty much, I you might even be better than 80% re <laughs> preventing relapses. I, now, I don't make videos to show you how to stay away from a relapse. I make the videos to show you how you can fight back against MS and recover what MS has stolen from you. So maybe I'm gonna need some help. Maybe I'm gonna need a neurologist to talk about what I have for years. Enter my favorite on YouTube. Dr. Brandon Bieber. He just published a video where he absolutely demolished this whole vitamin D and multiple sclerosis misunderstanding. And he starts talking about what I've been pointing to. I'm going to stick a link down to it in the description. I strongly recommend you watching it, but only after you finish this one. 
when you do click on that link, it will start at a timestamp right where he starts talking about ultraviolet light radiation. The maps he uses is, are fair, but I think I use a far more effective map because it uses satellite images captured from at NASA looking right down on Earth surface to look at the UV radiation. And I think that fills in critical information that Dr. Beeper's, Beeper's map is missing. He talks a lot about the sun in his videos. So to that end, we need to talk a little bit about space, the sun, and Earth. Despite what most people think, the Earth doesn't move around the sun in a perfect sphere. Gravity and Kepler's first law of planetary motion work to keep the Earth at an elliptical orbit. So that means the Earth is never the same distance from the sun, even day to day. The closest point it reaches is 91.4 million miles away on or around December 22nd. And the most distant point is 94.5 million miles happening on or around June 22nd. Overall, the Earth's distance from the sun is always less than 5 million miles. That isn't huge, but when it comes to UV radiation happening down here on Earth, it is. So take a look at the, my map. Purple is high UV levels and green is our low UV. The raw data looks a little strange. <laughs> so I'm gonna overlay a map of the world. I took time in laying this map over. In January, the Earth is the closest it is to the sun. And it just so happens the, the Southern Hemisphere is facing, is in the longest day of the year. So factoring in the tilt of the Earth, which, which oscillates between 22.1 and 24.5 degrees, you can see the majority of the Southern Hemisphere is purple. But fast forward six months to July, when the Earth is farthest away. Most of the purple has gone away. And except for a few re select regions, in Dr. Bieber's video, he highlights the country Ecuador. This is when typography comes into play. As elevation rises, the air above is less, which means the less filtering of the ultraviolet radiation. Ecuador has the Andes mountain range running right down the middle. Quito, Ecuador's largest city, it sits at 9,250 feet. At that elevation and sitting directly on the equator, that means UV radiation is high year round. For comparison, Denver, Colorado, nicknamed the Mile High City, is only 6,086 feet. And it's not on the equator like Quito. So zoom, zooming back out to the entire world view. Dr. Beaver points out the majority of the human population lives in the Northern Hemisphere. Don't you see that's far away from adequate levels of UV to control our multiple sclerosis? But what I think is the strongest is not where we live, it's how we live. I think the human race is outpacing itself and we have evolved to most people live their lives indoors and out of the sun. And having multiple sclerosis, we absolutely need that radiation to balance out the immune system. One thing B uh, Dr. Beer focuses on 
is in his videos is CD25 regulatory cells. And in this video, I wanna focus on carotenocytes. Carotenocytes are the primary cell type of cell in the outer layers of our skin. UVB radiation significantly increases the aging phenotype in carotenocytes, which make the population younger and more active. That makes them potent producers of anti-inflammatory mediators such as interleukin-10 and transforming growth factor beta. These mediators will go head to head in a battle with inflammation causing cells like interleukin-17 that have caused MS to begin in the first place. Even though we are outpacing our genetics, we haven't forgotten about them now. And have found even better solutions. A UVB lamp. It gives off therapeutic radiation we need that is so intense, I only need to use it a few minutes every other day to achieve the suppression that is fantastic. Don't forget to watch Dr. Bieber's video. Also, I'm gonna stick a link at the end of this video that goes over the options you have when looking for a UVB lamp if you're looking to buy one. What do you think? Have I made it clear enough that it is UV light, not vitamin D, that is the center of this conversation? Have you stopped taking a, a D3 pill yet? Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. Until the next one.